Prepare to witness, a devastating crisis that threatens to disrupt global trade and reshape international shipping routes. Join us as we uncover the terrifying phenomenon taking place in the Panama Canal as its water level suddenly drops. This hasn't been witnessed in this region for decades, even though the region has been plagued by severe drought for the past 20 years. This is Future Destiny. Join us as we unveil the sudden drying up of the Panama Canal. The construction of the Panama Canal is a remarkable tale of engineering and international cooperation, which has contributed to the transportation of goods and persons within the North and Central America continent. But before we proceed, let's have a brief history of the Panama Canal. The idea of constructing a canal through the narrow isthmus of Panama to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans dates back to the early days of European exploration in the Americas. However, it wasn't until the late 19th century that serious efforts were made to turn this concept into a reality. In the early 1880s, the French, led by Ferdinand de Lesseps, who had successfully constructed the Suez Canal, took on the ambitious task of building a canal through Panama. The project faced numerous challenges, including tropical diseases like malaria and yellow fever, treacherous terrain, and financial difficulties. Despite initial progress, the French effort eventually faltered, largely due to the immense challenges they encountered. In 1903, the United States, under President Theodore Roosevelt, saw the strategic and economic value of a canal in Central America. The Panama Canal Zone, a 10-mile-wide strip of land, was acquired from Colombia through diplomatic negotiations and a subsequent revolution supported by the U.S. government. Under the leadership of John Frank Stevens and later George Washington Goethals, American engineers took charge of the project. They overcame the formidable obstacles of the region, including dense jungles, swamps, and landslides, while implementing innovative engineering techniques. The construction of the canal involved the excavation of an estimated 170 million cubic yards of earth, the creation of a vast system of locks to overcome the differences in elevation between the oceans, and the establishment of a freshwater lake, Gatton Lake, as a central component of the canal's waterway. Finally, on August 15, 1914, the Panama Canal was officially opened to international maritime traffic. The completion of the canal revolutionized global shipping, providing a shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, saving ships thousands of miles of travel around the southern tip of South America. The United States maintained control of the Panama Canal until December 31, 1999, when it was handed over to Panama under the terms of the Torrijos Carter Treaties, signed in 1977. The Panama Canal stands as a testament to human ingenuity and engineering prowess. It has played a critical role in global trade, facilitating the transportation of goods and significantly reducing travel times for ships traversing between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. However, the construction of the Panama Canal faced numerous significant challenges, and engineers had to devise creative solutions to overcome them. Geological and Geographical Obstacles The Isthmus of Panama presented challenging terrain, including dense jungles, rocky hills, and unstable soil prone to landslides. To address this, extensive excavation and earth-moving operations were undertaken. Massive amounts of soil and rock were removed to create the canal's pathway. Innovative engineering techniques, such as steam shovels, dredging equipment, and dynamite, were used to clear the way and create a navigable waterway through the isthmus. The canal required the creation of a reliable water source to maintain the water levels necessary for ship transportation. Gatton Lake, one of the largest artificial lakes in the world at the time, was created as a crucial component of the canal's waterway system. The lake collects water from the Chagres River and functions as a reservoir to maintain a consistent water supply for the lock's operation. As a result of heavy topography and mountain ranges, the construction of the canal was a challenging one, since it made it difficult for navigation. Therefore, they used a new technology. The adopted technology included creating a lock in different topographical regions. The Panama Canal features a system of locks, which are essential components of the canal's infrastructure. Locks are structures that enable ships to transit between different water levels and overcome the varying elevations along the canal route. The Panama Canal has three sets of locks, the Gatton Locks, the Pedro Miguel Locks, and the Miraflores Locks. Each set of locks serves a specific purpose in facilitating the passage of ships through the canal. Gatton Locks The Gatton Locks are located on the Atlantic side of the Panama Canal and consist of three chambers, the upper chamber, middle chamber, and lower chamber. These locks raise or lower ships between the sea level of the Caribbean Sea and the elevation of Gatton Lake, which is an artificial lake created as part of the canal's waterway system. 
The Gatton locks allow ships to ascend or descend approximately 85 feet to reach the level of Gatton Lake. Pedro Miguel Locks The Pedro Miguel Locks are situated near the Pacific entrance of the canal and consist of a single chamber. These locks lower ships from the elevation of Miraflores Lake, which is a smaller artificial lake located between the Pedro Miguel Locks and the Miraflores Locks, to the sea level of the Pacific Ocean. The Pedro Miguel Locks lower ships by approximately 30 feet to reach the Pacific Ocean. Miraflores Locks The Miraflores Locks, also located on the Pacific side of the canal, comprise two chambers, the first chamber and the second chamber. These locks further lower ships from the level of Miraflores Lake to the sea level of the Pacific Ocean. The Miraflores locks lower ships by about 55 feet to reach the Pacific Ocean. How the locks operate The locks operate using a system of gates and valves. Each lock chamber has two sets of gates, one at each end, to seal off the chamber and control the flow of water. The gates swing open and closed, allowing ships to enter or exit the chambers. When a ship enters a lock chamber, the gates close behind it, creating a controlled enclosure. Water is then either released into the chamber to raise the ship or drain from the chamber to lower the ship, depending on the direction of transit. The lock chambers are filled or emptied using gravity-fed water from adjacent reservoirs, such as Gatton Lake and Miraflores Lake. To fill or empty a lock chamber, large valves called culverts are opened or closed, allowing water to flow in or out, respectively. Once a ship has traversed a set of locks, it continues its journey along the canal, taking advantage of the artificial lakes and channels that have been created to maintain a navigable waterway across the Isthmus of Panama. The lock system of the Panama Canal is a remarkable feat of engineering, enabling ships of various sizes and tonnages to safely navigate the elevation changes along the canal route. It allows for efficient transits, reducing travel time and providing a vital link between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. By combining innovative engineering techniques, implementing strict disease control measures, and overcoming geographical and climatic obstacles, the challenges faced during the construction of the Panama Canal were successfully addressed. The collective efforts of engineers, workers, and administrators resulted in the completion of the canal, an engineering marvel that continues to facilitate global trade to this day. However, something terrifying is happening as this man-made marvel is suddenly drying up. Although the canal connects two oceans, its operation largely depends on a fresh water from a nearby lake, which had faced a 20-year drought and continues to do so. As a result, the water content for vessels to sail through it is insufficient and limited for local communities to drink. In August, the average wait time for ships went from less than a week to nearly a week and a half, creating a bottleneck. At some point in time, more than 160 ships were hanging out waiting for a Panama official to swipe right. Today that number is down, but, Part of the relief came from using more fresh water. Did I mention the region is experiencing a 20-year drought? Well, it's not different from the two-decade drought that has drained the Colorado River and left Nevada's Lake Mead at 34% of capacity. The canal receives roughly 40% of global cargo ship traffic. I wonder what prices might become if Panama doesn't get wetter soon? I wonder as well what's going to happen to the local residents who face a slight competition for fresh water. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments section below.